Adam Berkowitz here. Uh, today I wanted to show you a little bit of something I've been I've been just playing around with. I call it the triple beat repeat. Um, beat repeat's kind of an interesting device. Very useful. Uh, it does a lot of different things. Well, let's just stop the transport there. Um, but unlike a lot of the audio devices, it doesn't have a uh, a wet dry knob. Um, instead, what it has is uh, three different settings, three different modes. You've got your mix, insert, and gate. Mix blends the signal of uh, the incoming audio with the processed uh, audio from beat repeat. Insert replaces whatever the incoming audio was with whatever beat repeat wants to spit out. And gate suppresses everything uh, except for what beat repeat wants to give us. So between these three modes, mix, insert, and gate, and the chance setting, which uh, determines how often this all happens, uh, not in terms of time, but in terms of probability, um, you can get a lot of interesting effects. And so what I decided was that I, I wanted to have all of these at my disposal at once. And so I created a, an effects rack where I've got one set to mix, one set to insert, and one set to gate. And then I've got this last one here, which I, which I just called control. <coughs> and what control does is I've got one LFO, which I've mapped to the change selector, and I'll show you that in a moment. And the other is this multi-map uh, that's been assigned to all the chance parameters, all the variation parameters, and one of the pitch decays. I can't honestly remember which one right now. So, but let's take a look at the chain selector because that's sort of uh, the most important thing for this. So here's the chain selector and you can see it jumping around quite a bit right now. If I drop select down to zero and depth down to zero, this down to zero and this, get rid of that. Now we can see how this is all going to work. So bear with me for a moment. There we go. I mapped out each of the different uh, devices to their own regions. So this one goes from, I think, 1 to about 50. This one from like 35 to 80, 90, whatever. And this one, the rest of them. I actually left this one slot open uh, just, for, just to let the uh, draw, completely dry signal of my uh, track come through <clears throat> just so I wouldn't have anything just in case um, and it also gave a place for the control to sit but as I move my select knob here you can see that the LFO starts to move over here on the right side and right now the transports not working so it's not really doing anything but you can kind of see it and when we start the transport it'll start to move this is actually set to the offset and if I turn up the, if I go over here and turn up the rate, and go like that, offset, and, oop, not that one, and add some depth. There we go. Well, it doesn't seem to want to work at the moment over here, but here we can see that it's, that it's moving quite a bit. That the chain selector is moving and if I turn up smoothing that's uh, controlling the jitter and smooth this moves back and forth and gives us the ability to <clears throat> let the let the computer decide on its own where the uh, where the chain selector should be. This one over here I mapped to shape that gives me different kinds of shapes for the LFO, every single one, including completely random. And frequency and sync is basically a kind of toggle that uh, switches back and forth between, um, you know, using an independent uh, time clock and uh, the 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 uh, transport sync. Um, but what's interesting about that is that if you set it to uh, frequency, a low setting will be very slow, but if you then toggle over to sync, 
the rate will actually be much faster. Uh, so that's kind of lets you do uh, some different things all by itself. Then uh, over here I map chance to all the others. And what we can do is we can now hear what happens when I go like this. And we can see that the audio is being processed by each of the different chains. And if I go like that a little bit, turn up the chance. So there you go, three different beat repeats, uh, one LFO and one multi-map to create a lot of variety for a two-bar drum pattern. Okay, thanks very much.